right, so hopefully the sound is, yeah, perfect. So my presentation is about uh, how I found fishing kits. Um, so when you found some fishing kits, the numbers is too big. So it's around about 20,000 fishing kits I found. The research was started from March um, uh, this year, and I just took the snapshot um, yesterday. So the total number I, ha I have 20,000. Uh, my presentation would be divided in three phases. So first phase is um, what the tool worked, how it works itself. Uh, what sort of uh, indicators and um, interesting stats I'm pulling from those fishing kits. Plus, the second phase, when it goes, uh, it's more about detailed analysis of those fishing kits related to a um, few New Zealand banks. And third would be the demo of uh, my tool. So before I start, that's the boring stuff we need to get sorted. Um, so whatever I am presenting here, it's uh, just my um, interest and uh, my hobby sort of thing. Um, nothing to uh, attribute with my employer. Um, uh, and all those fishing kits um, obviously can be used for malicious purposes. So I promise that I haven't used for malicious pur purposes. Yeah. Um, so that's um, how I see the world, and uh, most of the information security guys here um, agree with me. So I've been working in information security 10 years now. Um, last two years, more specifically as the core member of cybersecurity incident response team in one of the New Zealand um, largest bank. Um, so obviously, when you work in the CERT, uh, you deal with those phishing um, things. I mean, that's the biggest threat we have. Um, and everyone agrees on that because it's targeting every other industry. And you will see how easy it is to set up um, and what sort of um, information you can just get from user, like login, password, and whatnot. Right, so first I would uh, want to give shout out to the these guys, the people or the individuals or the group of people behind these names because I've been utilizing these um, APIs um, to do some um, threat hunting. Um, yeah, so let's get started. So how it all started is um, when we work as a, in a cert, we see the phishing URL um, going for our employees or our customers. What we do, we just capture those URLs and then put the takedown request. That's it. I mean, it's takedown and that's it. But that's going one step further to build some sort of intelligence behind what is, um, are those phishing kits being utilized more and more or only particular phishing kits being active for certain periods um, and what sort of actors behind those um, fishing kits. So all this information um, um, was really keen. Uh, I was really keen to do, uh, find out. Um, so after doing some research, um, obviously I went to the dark world as well because can't find this kind of information in the clear net. So how it works um, when you um, talk to some scammers, and they said that um, there are two kind of phishing kits. Uh, one is a duplicate and one is develop one. So the duplicate one is really, um, has really good chances to picked up by all those um, AV or whatnot. Uh, but the developer one is because they develop from scratch, so they you can't match the hash of the page. So obviously it's not really easy to detect. So there are some uh, size difference as well because um, for the duplicate one, you can just get it in under $10 and obviously developer one, you need some guys to actually develop it. So it's around 50 US dollars something. Um, so 
when you ask them that, okay, I want to get the phishing kit, uh, what is the procedure? So they gave you the zip file. In that zip file, they said to you that, okay, what you are targeting, are you are targeting some financial institute or you just targeting some Hotmail, Gmail, or Dropbox or whatnot. So you tell them that, um, okay, I'm targeting this, and then they said that this is the uh, PHP file. You just need to modify the two address to your um, email address where you want all those credentials coming through. So once you get the zip file, um, you look after the compromise uh, website or you actually put the shell up and compromise the site, legit site, to put your phishing kit over there and then unzip it um, so that you can send that complete URL to all those um, target audience. Now the third step would be the SMTP, where you're gonna find the SMTP. So you need to find the open relay SMTP server where you can just bulk send the those email addresses, um, the phishing um, links. Target audience is really easily uh, can be found because you just go to the Google and do the scrapping um, and whatever your target audience is, um, you can find. So it would be really difficult to pull those phishing kits um, because they are getting really smarter. Um, so they put the geological um, uh, filter place in the fishing kits. So obviously, if you are targeting New Zealand bank, so they expect you coming from New Zealand. So obviously, if you're coming from Russia or Romania, they will just, it will not work. <laughs> so this is about the tool, how it's going to work. So it's a, a continuous process uh, running from March. Um, so the step one is it, uh, it has two automated and manual ways, uh, how it works. So automated is the getting URLs from fish tank and open fish. And uh, roughly, I see uh, 40 to 50 uh, new URLs um, from both of those fish, uh, fish tank and open fish. Uh, manual is we have the, within the banks, um, different banks, we have the, the platform where we can share the intel intelligence. And obviously, we can share that with Cert and Z as well. Um, so once we find the phishing URL, I just dump that into that uh, script. Now you need to make sure that uh, this script runs anonymously because the last thing you want is those bad guys be your IP addresses or your user agent and all that stuff. So for that, um, yeah, it's really hard because if they block uh, you or they just want New Zealand specific, so if you are using VPN or Tor, um, you will not be able to see those phishing URLs. The second phase is uh, once you have a phishing kit um, uh, downloaded, uh, it will start pulling some indicators, so indi uh, indis uh, interesting indicators like email addresses, which um, attacker modify, um, the cyber criminals modify their email address too. This is the sample of um, how that uh, PHP, um, the thing they modify. So the thing they modify is this um, two address, and that's it. And all that sort of information they are collecting uh, from the customers um, or the they are targeting. Uh, third and the last step is just hash out um, those uh, unique um, phishing kits and build the database of the unique because most of the time what happened that you see the phishing kit and it, it has been utilizing, I've seen so many phishing kits being utilized again and again and again, so it, they never change it. So only way when they change the two address, whole hash will be changed. So it is obvious they are not, uh, they are the same person who are utilizing those phishing kits. This is the latest um, a screenshot um, yesterday I took. It says that how many uh, phishing kits I have. And as soon as you run this script, um, it will give you all these latest numbers in the database. So the emails so far collected for those um, scammers or whatnot, 30,000. 
and the domains I have seen um, as fish thousands. So if you see that 20,000 is the total fishing kit and the uh, unique one is 4,000. So that makes sense, I mean, because most of the kits being utilized for different domains as well. So there are different domains in here. Now, what is that VT match? So what I'm doing, uh, as soon as I download the phishing kit, I check with the virus total, that if virus total able to detect it. So out of those phishing kits, um, unique ones, only um, this number virus total can detect it. So what interesting uh, things I have found so far um, uh, utilizing this tool is that so I have phishing kits available in my database of all these brands, because these are the brands which like prominent to me and I have searched it, but obviously there are some other phishing kits uh, brands as well. So because my background is uh, from financial institute, I'm more focused on this side. So I wanted to know that what sort of phishing kits available for which banks. Um, so some stats, um, as I've been showing you, that email extracted. So this is uh, kind of old um, uh, from that snapshot. So uh, still the Hotmail is the first choice for the guys, cyber criminals. They are loving the Hotmail. Uh, most common brand uh, in the database I have is related to Apple, Dropbox, Google Docs. Now this chart is interesting um, is when the kit got modified. So I still have uh, downloaded uh, three kits, which were modified in 2006, and they have been continuously utilizing that, that kit um, to even in 2017. So obviously nothing has changed since 2006, and they are keep utilizing those um, kits. Okay, now I will do some deeper sort of investigation for those uh, financial institutes in New Zealand. So the first, first up is the Westpac. So um, total I have um, 115 URLs, uh, phishing URLs, um, which my uh, script crawl. Um, so these are the dates when those um, kits have been downloaded. Um, and these are the domains, right? So kit has been modified. These, these are kind of recent ones. So you can see this one is 2015, this one 2015. The other threat intelligence piece I do here is I check the email address with the have I been pawned. So what I, what I have seen, what happened is that they wanna fake their identity. So what they see, what they get is the email addresses from the data breaches, and they start taking over those uh, email addresses and util utilizing those email addresses for this malicious purposes. There were a few incidents uh, happened when I managed to find out a um, whole lot of phishing um, sites by just doing the reverse lookup to the actor email address. So for example, um, this is the email address I reverse lookup that how many domains this guy has. So yeah, they were that's why I'm doing reverse lookup as well. So as you can see that this email address have been um, pawned in Daily, uh, Daily Motion and MySpace. So there are chances that um, someone who is staying behind this is not actually behind this. So this is for ASB, um, total number of fish I found that, and these are different fishing kits. So same story goes, um, modified email addresses. Um, yeah, so this guy is actually, um, I've, do, I've done some research, and this guy is actually targeting ASB for years and years, and his email address constantly, I keep looking at the new fishing kits, and his um, email address is there. Um, and if you simply Google 
um, this email address, you can find all of his bank details and everything. Um, so yeah. Um, so last one is the Kiwi Bank. Obviously, I can't do analysis for all the banks because of the um, timing sort of thing. Um, yeah. So interesting thing in that is that this guy had been known for all those New Zealand banks. So the kits I have for ASB, BNZ, and Westpac, this guy is pretty common in all those phishing kits. And yeah, he, if you search him, he will be, he, he has a profile on Facebook and you can see, but um, I'm not say, saying that he's actually the guy behind this. All right, so what sort of logs they are collecting? So it's really interesting how people fall for those fishes. I mean, it's really, they are collecting everything. I mean, so if you can see that user is actually giving ATM pin, spoon pin, what is the secret name of your first pad? And I mean, password is fine. I mean, you can get password, but they are collecting every every detail. Uh, so when I was doing these analysis, because um, I, as I mentioned that um, I am pulling down um, uh, zip file, uh, PHP file, PNG, and then TXT files, and that's what I'm crawling. All of a sudden, um, in few months after July, I have started seeing this crime site.txt in most of those um, um, logs I have pulled down from those uh, sites. So, uh, I mean, I, I, I was really confused because lots of domain has this crime site.txt. Then I have started having chat in my circle and asking different guys that, hey, what's this crime site.txt? So, when you open those crime site.txt, you find all this information that cPanel, uh, I mean, if it's a cPanel, um, this is the user of the attacker or the cyber criminal. It's the e IP addresses he used, and these are the email addresses uh, of the cyber um, criminal being utilized for those sending those credential. So I found that uh, this is um, done by one of the white hat hacker who actually go to those compromised website, put the shell up and then take over the server, clean all that uh, phishing um, links and then just drop that crime site.txt. So there are some good guys actually doing work on behalf of the organization as well. So as you see that um, FBI has a little office at gmail.com. I want, I was keen, I wanted to know that do my database have that sort of email address and have I seen it before? So yes, when I searched with the email address, I found this email address associated with the AliExpress phishing kit. Um, so yeah, I mean, um, this, has been utilized previously as well. All right, so now it's time for recorded demo. All right, so first up is the Westpac. Well, the background music I took from that one of the guy who's selling the fishing gets. <laughs> so yeah, total is 71 uh, kits uh, URLs found. Um, this is the hash of that uh, zip file. That was the domain, and that was the modified date when it was modified. That was the email address of the cyber criminal, and that's where the virus total checked. So no positive. Virus total is unable to detect it. So now what I will do is copy that email address and see if any other phishing kit associated with that email address.
So no, and I checked with the uh, have I been pawned? So uh, this email address is not pawned on that. There is no reverse lookup associated to mails with that email address. So now it's ASB. So this re demo was recorded two months back. So. That's why you see the numbers here, it's low. So now the same thing is uh, this is the hash of that uh, phishing kit, this is the domain, and this is the modified date. That's the date when it was downloaded. That's the email address, and no positive from virus photo. So search. Uh, this email address if there is another phishing kit associated with this email address so yeah there is one this October and this is the other domain so this uh, email address being used for different kits so there is two different hashes and obviously it's not on and um, nothing on the hood. So the last one is TV Bank. Exactly the same thing, um, hash, then it's downloaded, the domain name, and it's from OpenFish, you can see. Um, so yeah, Kiwi details of PHP. So that's the guy I was talking about. It's pretty common in all those, those banks. So now you can see that um, I put that email address and found other stuff related to this email address. So that is Kiwi Bank, and that is Kiwi Bank, that is Kiwi Bank. So there are three different fishing gets. And you will see that this being detected by virus photo as a positive, and it's also associated with Westpac. So this email address is also associated with Westpac. And it's not being um, pawned or nothing on this. So that's my talk. Um, it's really interesting what information you can get from those phishing kits. Obviously, I have to, um, uh, I can't show you all that stuff. Um, some credit card information and all that stuff uh, also. So yeah, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> so if anyone has any question. Yep. So there are two methods I'm calling uh, on basis of, of. So one is the open directory. So if you find found the index of, so you just look for that. And the other is um, you just put the zip on on the end of that um, URL name. So asb.zip and the westpac.zip. So all that sort of thing. So yeah. So that's not um, being an employee of uh, financial institute. I can't directly contact them. Um, so what we do, we just share the intel with CERT NZ. So it's CERT NZ responsibilities they can contact. So 
anyone else? Cool. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.